Hi, I'm Rebecca at the Dry Eye Company in Paulsbo, Washington. I run the Dry Eye Zone and Dry Eye Shop websites. Today, we're going to talk about how to protect an eye with a non-closing eyelid to keep it safe and comfortable. This is a common need for people who have had acoustic neuroma surgery or you have facial palsy, many other situations too, like Graves' disease, maybe complications from an elective eyelid surgery, accidents, there's just all kinds of situations where a lid might not be closing on its own. So what happens when your lid is not blinking properly, not closing fully? First of all, since your lid is not wiping up and down the way it should over and over all day long, it's not pumping tears, it's not spreading tears around, but most of all, it's also just not keeping the eye covered all that time that it's not blinking. So you're having massive evaporative tear loss in addition to impaired tear function. Some of you probably have some corneal damage from exposure. Some of you probably have your vision impacted in that eye. A lot of you are in pain. If you're not, it might actually be because your corneal sensitivity has been reduced by what's happened to it, which is also not good. And if you're watching this, you already know that more lubrication is not necessarily the answer. There comes a point when all the drops, gels, and ointments in the world are simply not enough to keep your eye comfortable or fully protected. So how do you protect the eye? There's basically two main strategies. You can try to seal the lid shut some of the time, with tape or tape plus a pad or special strips, or you can protect the eye with a moisture chamber. That keeps out dry moving air. It keeps in moisture, but it doesn't actually touch the eye. So a moisture chamber really does help both with protection of the eye and comfort. I'm gonna show you a lot of things uh, today, but what I really wanna emphasize is that everyone has different needs. There's almost always a trial and error aspect to this. So let's look at some products. First, we're gonna look at some tapes. I'm gonna start with a pretty cheap one. This is the Kind Removal Tape. The drugstore name of this is Next Care Sensitive Skin Silicone Tape. This is one of the first ones um, I used. It's reasonably skin friendly. It's not as sticky as like a paper tape or a plastic tape. Now, different people tape different ways. For me, the best method has always been vertical. I start up here, I start pressing down and then right onto my cheek. That's gonna hold my lid quite securely with most tapes. For some people though, just based on their eye anatomy, their, their facial bone structure, vertical tape will never hold their lid down. I think especially people with um, deeper set eyes have a real difficulty holding the lid down. So you can try horizontally, not just vertically going straight across the eye like that. You can also get creative. Once I remember years and years ago when I just had a roll of, of really skinny tape, I took two pieces and made an X across my eye. So you just kind of do what works. There's another tape. This is my favorite tape in the universe right now until they come up with something better. This is called Mepitac. It costs the earth, but it's really nice feeling to the extent a tape can actually be nice feeling. Nobody wants to tape their lids, but sometimes we just really need to. This again on me, I would do it vertically. They make a roll with a nice wide, this is about an inch and a half wide. That's about as secure as anything could get on my eye. One of the things that I like about this one, um, in some situations, somebody's got just such a painful eye, they simply cannot have it open during the day. Um, I know everyone's got different flesh colors, so flesh-toned um, tape is gonna work for some people and absolutely not for others. Um, but this is, for some people at least, it's going to be a relatively discreet one if you have to wear it under glasses. I mean, it's not super great, but it beats a pirate patch type of thing at least. It's just not quite as obvious and obnoxious as it could be. So that's about the best tape you can get for night taping. One of the common things people are gonna ask about taping a lid down is, is it going to pull out all my eyelashes? So for me, the answer is no, as long as I'm careful. But there's an awful lot of people with dry eye who have very brittle lashes that pull out easily. So um, this may not, tapes in general, may really be a problem for your lashes. 
I think a product that's gonna be better where lashes are concerned for most people is actually the eye lock strips. And some of you may have seen my other video about these. The eye lock strips are pretty cool because they have this window in them that's got a really light adhesive and then around the perimeter it's a lot stickier. Plus they have these little tabs to be able to pull it off. So this is in place of a tape. I can't really see what I'm doing, so I may have it positioned not perfectly here. Um, but if you're careful with how you put it on, you can make sure that the window part goes over your lashes so you're getting the least possible adhesive on the lashes, which will also make it easier with taking it off. This is again something that you could conceivably wear under glasses during the day if you needed to. But these are used primarily at night. One of the pluses is that you get up in the night, it's just so much easier to take it by the tab and lift it so that you can see and then push it back down afterwards. I have a lot of people using these now and they're quite popular. I do have a handful of people who absolutely cannot tolerate the adhesive. I mean like they tried it once and their skin was completely miserable. Um, I've heard from others who had irritation from the adhesive, but they were able to put something down like a little castor oil, which is reasonably eye friendly, if a little bit of it seeps into your eyes. They would put that down underneath where the harshest part of the adhesive goes. And it didn't seem to interfere with the adhesive, but it sure made it a lot more comfortable. Other people have told me they press them on their skin first before they put them on their eye, and that seems to take off enough for them. So those are the kind of the first batch of sticky things. That's the tapes. We're going to look next at the bubble eye bandages. So this is what we would call a moisture chamber. Anything that is going to seal your eye in is what I would call a moisture chamber. I don't actually know the right way to put these things on. I just know the way that I would do it if I were using it. And that's with the arrow thing kind of pointed to the middle of my forehead. So this is the Night Eye, N-I-T-E-Y-E -E patch. These things are expensive and awesome. It's an extremely popular product for a reason. I mean, other than the fact that of course all adhesives are bad, it just does an amazing job because you've got the solid plastic bubble. It vaults way high over the eye. Nothing can touch the eye. You know, you can be sleeping face down, mashing your face into the pillow. Nothing is going to touch your eye. The adhesive makes it very secure, but it's also not the worst adhesive in the world. We will get to that one shortly. These really, I've never found them all that bad pulling off. My cheek is the worst place, but then I've been trying tapes and patches off and on for the last hour, so my cheeks are gonna be bright red after that much. Anyway, no matter what the adhesive is. So that was the night eye. The next one is the Ortolux bandage. This one comes in two sizes. There's a small and a large. This is actually a better designed product. It just has a horrible adhesive, but the actual bubble part of it is great because it's lower profile. Again, I tend to just point upwards on these things. Sometimes people are able to use this one under glasses. I'm actually going to try it under these and see. Oh, wow, I, I, I can't. It's pushing them out a little bit, but not too much. I can't guarantee that it would work under glasses for everyone. It just depends on your size of your orbital bone, really, and where it sits. But for some, clearly, it's going to work. So that's not too bad of a daytime solution. Most people, again, would use these at night. The downside to the Ortolux is the adhesive. Maybe I'm just biased, but personally, I just find it horrible on the skin. It's just painful. Funny thing is, it's the same adhesive they use on kids' patches. I just can't picture it on Get skin, yikes. Like I said, there's two sizes of that. You need the, the extra large. It looks about like that. Okay, let's look at a couple other things. The next step up from there, moisture chamber wise, would be something more durable. The bubble patches are great, but they are disposable. They get very expensive. And again, you got adhesive against the skin. So then inexpensive things that are basically 
souped up surgical shields. This is called a solo shield. It's like the same kind of tape-on shields you would use after a surgery, but they put this layer of foam on it and stuck a cheap little strap around it. This one's not too horribly bad. I know it's gonna look ridiculous here. Um, the limitation of it is it's got these great big old vent holes. I've never found one that doesn't have the vent holes. So it's not gonna protect you from everything, from all drafts, air conditioning. It will give you some protection. I mean, it's solid all across the middle there. So wind straight on or whatever is not gonna get at you, but it's got big vent holes in both the corners. Then there's the Duo Shield. That's this guy. It's two of those things cinched together. And again, a strap around the back. Oddly enough, I actually find this one a little more comfortable than the Solo Shield for some reason. It's just more balanced. There's less pressure on the pad on it. Again, it's vented, so it's limited, but it is some protection. It is rigid and the strap is skinny, but I mean, as long as you're not thrashing around a lot at night, it should work reasonably well. I would say that the very best of the post-surgical type things, though, is the lazy goggle. That's this one here. This is more comfortable overall. The pads are spread over a wider area. It's got a much better strap. It's also fully adjustable. It's got a gap in the foam at the sides and some vents here. For some people, that matters more than others. I mean, the strap covers it up. There's very little that's really going to get in there when it's against your head. Uh, but I have had some people just plug it with some extra foam there or even cover over those holes with a little silicone. Um, the great thing about this one is you can just make it so secure it's not going anywhere at night. Again, very uh, stomach sleeper, side sleeper friendly, but it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. The foam pads just aren't the softest. They're not bad. There's worse, but um, for an inexpensive product, you really can't do better than this one. Then after that, other moisture chambers are going to be the moisture goggles from iEco. Um, and just to back up for a moment, when you've got a, only one lid not closing, you tend to want to address just that one lid and not have something over both eyes. The problem is there just aren't any decent, durable products on the market that are designed for a single eye. They are all for both eyes. So a lot of people with a single eye problem at least at night, they're wearing something over both eyes just because they can get something more effective and more comfortable that way. So the number one of those for the situation where you've got a lot of exposure, unless you have a really tiny face, I would always recommend the iSeals 4.0 first. That's this one and it comes in solid colors, but you know, most people tend to prefer clear so they can get up in the night without having to take it off. So on someone like me, this is gonna fit almost but not quite airtight. Um, for ladies with very small faces, it may be too big and may do some kind of gapping over here. You may be looking at a different solution, um, but it's a pretty close seal all the way around. It is reasonably comfortable for sleeping in. We use this for dry eye in general all the time, especially when people can't tolerate having something touch their lids. They're a little pricey, uh, but they do have a one-year manufacturer warranty in case of tearing. When that one's too big, I would turn to the Quartz Silicon Shield. This is my personal favorite just because it's kind of low profile, really just simple. It's a thing I can pop on, wash it really easily, and so forth. The thing with the Quartz, though, is a little more flexible fit. And if you're moving around a lot at night, it's going to move with you more. So you're probably not going to get that almost airtight seal that you would get with eye seals. Both of those products, by the way, have a fully adjustable strap. It's like a fabric wrap style strap. So then last, I wanna just mention a few products that I definitely do not recommend to people who have a non-closing eyelid. Number one is cling film. That's something that's commonly used. It's very popular for just dry eye or even like a little bit of nocturnal leg of thermos where the lid's opening a little bit overnight. If you have a wider opening, I would really worry about that cling film actually coming in contact with the cornea and giving you an abrasion. So I would steer clear of that. I also don't recommend Tranquilize for this specific use. Tranquilize are the, 
popular moisture goggles with the little foam pads in them that you get wet and put in. It's an awesome tool for severe dry eye, but for somebody with a lid that's coming open too wide, I'm always going to worry that that pad, if things slide around during the night, that it gets on their eye and causes them some harm. So I tend to stay away from that and stick with things that are truly going to fault the eye area. And one last thing that you will see on my site that a lot of people are tempted to get for this situation is the pressure patch. I would just say don't. I think those things are horribly uncomfortable. The foam is very thick, but it's also very stiff. It could just put too much pressure on your eye. I think there's just better options than that. So to sum up, the solution for a non-closing eyelid is going to be different for everyone. The most popular things I know are the eye lock strips. That was these little guys. The night eye bandages. That was this guy, and the Eye Seals 4.0, this guy. All of the products that I showed you are available at dryeyeshop.com, but I think most importantly, what I want to say is we're available. Just to help with brainstorming and troubleshooting and any questions, just helping you find what you need. The best way to reach us is to go to dryeyeshop.com, go to the Contact Us page, and click on the link to schedule a callback. That way you can make sure and not get voicemail and make sure and get plenty of our time uh, when you call. Thanks for watching and have a great day.